I have grown up watching and listening to one of the most commanding and beautiful actors in history. Yes, I said beautiful. Shakespearean trained actor and pioneer, James Earl Jones. Jones displayed incredible range and versatility throughout his illustrious career. His presence commanded the loyal citizens of Zamunda as King Joffrey Joffre in the film Coming to America. never tied his shoes. Believe me, I tied my own shoes once. It is an overrated experience. The Sith Lord, Darth Vader, in the iconic Star Wars franchise. The clairvoyance enough to find the rebel's hidden fort. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Enough of and last but not least, James Earl Jones lent his beautiful voice to Disney as the noble, just king Mufasa in Disney's smash hit, The Lion King. You could have been killed. You deliberately disobeyed me. And what's worse, you put Nala in danger. I was just trying to be brave like you. I'm only brave when I have to be. Simba, being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble. James Earl Jones has done commercials, theater, animation, and was an army ranger. He has also narrated the Bible twice. Out of all the roles James Earl Jones has done, there has been one so revolutionary and so inspiring to me that as much as I love the main hero of this franchise, I always want to see this villain. That role is Thulsa Doom, the Black Sun, an antagonist of the 1982 sword and sorcery ma masterpiece, Conan the Barbarian. Thulsa Doom was created by the late Robert E. Howard, creator of such iconic stories including Conan, Solomon Kane, King Cole, and Bran Mockmorn, to name a few. Thulsa Doom first appeared in the Cole the Conqueror series and is described by Howard in the Cat and Skull story as having a face like a bare white skull whose eye sockets flamed livid fire. Thulsa Doom is a sorcerer who serves the god Set, a necromancer, and called the Conqueror's main nemesis. Thulsa Doom became so popular that he crossed over into several series, including Howard's legendary Conan series. Most of you, if not all of you, know that Conan has joined Marvel Comics, and there are so many great things about this terrifying character. I advise you, if you want to learn more about Thulsa Doom and his exploits and his origins, I advise you to check out Marvelous Video's wonderful YouTube video, Thulsa Doom Origins. It's a really great video and it kind of helped me do this initial video. Let me show you a clip of James Earl Jones' 1982 performance of Thulsa Doom and why this scene is so powerful to me.
As a young adolescent and as a grown ass man, this scene immediately locks my attention. It's beautifully captured and shot by the legendary John Milius and cinematographer Duke Callahan. The scene depicts larger than life warriors who slaughter and destroy everything in their path. These sinister men who remove their helmets display an almost vacant, solemn, apathetic expression. Two distinct warriors join the crew as they trap a gorgeous young woman and her young son, the young Conan. These men pass along from one hand to another an exquisite blood-covered sword in a silent and brief ceremony. This same sword was created by Conan's father, who was mauled by dogs moments ago trying to defend his family. When I see a more dreadful figure who bursts into the foreground between these two vacant, solemn men, I immediately know that this person is the big boss. As this dreadful individual takes off his black horn helmet, I immediately and simultaneously feel dread and astonishment. This character does not look like his henchman. Well, he does and he doesn't. He appears to be from another place. Specifically, his features are reminiscent of my father, my grandfather, someone in my family, a black man, if you will. I'm immediately asking questions in my mind of like, who is this guy? How did he get to that position? Why do the men follow him? He doesn't look that all that muscular and he is a bit smaller in stature to them. Ignorantly, I'm ignoring the fact that this man has come to do and has done bloody and dastardly deeds. What is also fascinating about the scene is that not a single on-screen character has uttered a single word. Sidebar, I wanted to time the duration between when the men, Thulsa, Moon's, Thulsa Doom's men first ride up and surround Conan's mother. Um, between the time they do that and the time we hear the next scene of dialogue done and foretold by the legendary late actor Mako. And I timed it and the time came out to be three minutes, 54 seconds, give or take a second or two. That's amazing to me. And sidebar, the only sound I hear is the epic and beautiful score from the legendary composer Basil Polidorus. I'm immediately transfixed and locked into this scene, almost like I'm being brainwashed or seduced. I'm waiting for someone to say something. I know exactly what's going on when I see Conan's beautiful mother stand like a warrior queen, ready to kill anyone who attempts to touch her son. Then the film subverts my expectations even more. When instead of Thulsa Doom just immediately stabbing his mother, he calmly walks up to Conan's mother with a piercing gaze and just stares at her. Paul Dora's score takes a softer, more melodic tone as you watch James Earl Jones riz the shit out of the mother with just a fucking gaze. Mind you, no one has uttered a single word. The slight rise of James Earl Jones' eyebrows signals to Conan's mother to lower her sword, lower her threat impulse, and simply acquiesce to death. It is at this moment I understood why Thulsa Doom's men follow him. As James Earl Jones keeps his gaze on Conan's mother, you can see the softness of his gaze turn into a cold, murderous intent. I've seen this same gaze in tons of anime. From characters like Satoru Gojo, Itachi Uchiha, Lelouch Lamberouge, and Annie Leonhardt. Immediately as Thulsa Doom turns around, my heart sinks as a dread sets in, and the camera captures James Earl Jones literally turning his back from Conan's mother slowly, silently, and seductively almost like a snake. The camera shows a shot of young Conan as he looks up at the imposing Thulsa Doom and his men and up at his mother as her sword slowly falls by her wayside. Before the gears in Conan's little head can process all the events unfolding around him, before he can figure out what the hell is going on, he feels his mother's warm and soft hand leave his side. There are so many motions I feel in this moment as I look at Thulsa Doom. I remember, even to this day as a kid, I was saying to myself, why did you do that? Why did you kill his mom? Why did Conan's mother lower her sword? I was unconsciously looking at Thulsa Doom as if he were my father, my grandfather. And I was thinking to myself, my dad or papa wouldn't do that, right? The representation I was seeing on screen was twisting my little brain 
into knots at the speed of light. I was unknowingly putting myself in Conan's shoes, and I hated Thulsudun. I wanted him to die in the most horrible way. I was looking at this man as someone not my father, not my grandfather, but someone who was truly evil. That was so amazing. And that was the incredible performance of James Earl Jones to just lock you in with not his booming voice, but just his all-powerful gaze. It wasn't done with the word, not a single word. All, it was just all done with the eyes. I honestly think there's no other actor on the planet Earth who can buy the same impact on pop culture and the acting profession than James Earl Jones. He has so much presence and power in this scene and so many other scenes after this and dozens of other films. You have to understand, as a black man or a person of color, there are not too many actors of color that can be as captivating or transcendent as James Earl Jones has been. He was and is a pioneer for not only actors, but for black people because he always blazed a trail. He was never caught up in any drama like other pioneers of his era. And I only have the fondest memories of him in interviews and on screen as someone who was beautiful inside and out. James Earl Jones was a force of nature, an inspiration, a blueprint, and now a bright, shining star among kings and queens looking down from the heavens. Thank you so much, James Earl Jones, for all that you've done to inspiring a round black boy like me to reach for the stars. Rest in power.